Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Michelle Valancourt from uh, Morel, Prince Edward Island. Just wanted to talk to you about the uh, latest little change I've made to my U-siphon. Um, I uh, did a previous video where I talked about a couple things I experimented with, and a uh, couple things. One is that I've uh, added a Venturi to it, and uh, pretty pleased with the results given the absolute lack of complexity. Um, and the other thing was, uh, as I noted in the uh, video about the U-siphon, I had a uh, used a, uh, a gravel guard, um, and it seems to have dramatically improved the performance to the point where, if you remember in the last video, I uh, replaced this sweep elbow with a, with a sharp 90 to uh, improve cutoff and start speed. What I found is that this little piece of equipment down here, let me get it out of here, one sec. My, my assistant stick here. No, nope, that's not coming out of there. Anyway, what it is, I'll put a link to the uh, to it. It's a, a gravel guard, so it's slitted around the sides and underneath, which would normally sit on top and prevent overflow and stuff from getting sucked in. But by putting it underneath, for whatever reason, and I haven't figured it out yet, it uh, dramatically changes the performance of the of the U siphon um, to the point where it actually runs um, starts and stops uh, much more sharply, which is kind of cool. So, uh, but anyway, just, uh, so what I've got here is I've got my, uh, U-siphon. I've got a, a longer stand. That's the rooster again, saying hello, good morning. So, this piece goes underneath. That's, uh, 25, uh, sorry, 2.5 inch, uh, sorry, 2 inch and 50 millimeter all the way down to the bottom. I still have my, um, my reducer to go from, uh, 50 mil to 30 mil. And, uh, then we get some just regular half inch, one and a half inch pipe. I had this piece here, and I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's a hole cut in it. You can see where my finger is. Um, and I was using this for something else. And I uh, found an old piece of air hose I had, which was a leftover from uh, the rain barrel project, the sight tube on the rain barrel. So uh, I cut an angle on it, just like this, as I've seen in many other videos. And uh, all I do is... Uh, try hard to do this with uh, one hand, but it just goes through this hole so that the water flow is, is hitting the long side, moving past the short side. Hang on, I'll th thread it through and show you what it looks like. So you can see, I'll hold that up to the light now, and you can see that the uh, piece of pipe goes the whole way through. There you are. And from this side, you can clearly see that the... So this would be down pressure, and this would be up pressure or up flow. So the water s hits it, flows around the piece of vertical pipe, and because there's a little gap in the bottom, pulls air through that little area because it creates a vacuum around that spot. Air rushes in to fill the hole, and that air gets mixed into the turbulence that's caused. So I'll put it into the position here. That's all there is to it. It just gets slotted in the side. Then I take my other piece of elbow pipe and I just push it on. So now you can see how this is going to fit there. Ta-da. So water comes down here, across, hits the back of the piece of plastic, moves from the up pressure side, sucks air down the pipe, injects it into the water column, and then it falls out the bottom. So I'm going to hook this into my uh, simulator here, turn it on, and show you what it looks like. And here you are. You can see the water starting to flow out the end of the pipe. Now I've got the uh, the end of the pipe aimed at the side wall there. Just to, I'm tr trying to make uh, a circular flow in the bucket, just because it's easier to see how how much bubble space you get.
and I've done something wrong. I've got water back flowing out of the top of the uh, the Venturi. I must have put, I must have uh, twisted the pipe. Hang on a second while I uh, while I fix this and try and figure out what it is I've done wrong. Hi there, folks. Yeah, so it was exactly what I thought. Um, what had happened was that I, when I'd taken a moment to, uh, when I turned the camera off and gone to uh, mosquitoes, bloody mosquitoes, first thing in the morning. Sorry about that. Um, so when I'd uh, taken a minute to uh, put the pl piping together uh, with the camera off, I had uh, dropped a couple things and just scooped them back up and slammed everything together. And uh, as I suddenly, <laughs> as I realized, had unerringly managed to put this piece of pipe in exactly backwards so that the opening uh, was upflow, so it was acting as a scoop pulling water out, not a siphon pulling the air in. So um, anyway, uh, that's fixed. Um, and uh, so here we go again, just going to let this thing run. And you can see... No, there we go. And you can see just how much actual bubbles there is coming out of this. And now the end of the pipe is completely immersed. So the only place those bubbles are coming from, you can see the surface here, good and foamy. That's all oxygen that's being pulled in through the Venturi and uh, bubbling up to the surface. And that's fantastic news because what that means is, one is this runs much quieter. Um, because you don't have to um, drop the water from high in the air to drive it deep in and mix oxygen with it, you can run a much quieter system. Secondly, the Venturi will produce saturation almost automatically. Um, no matter how inefficient it is, because of the way um, the mechanism works, the uh, water basically pulls as much air out of into the mixture as the, the water can handle. Um, to equalize the pressure between the uh, the water and the uh, and the air, or that's my understanding anyway. So what really limits you is your bubble size. Um, so I, I've seen ver variations on a theme where you need to go to a you know a reducer to an expander and then a long straight, but this approach seems to work um, for very little actual pipe fit. Um, I'm thinking part of the reason it works is because I am already accelerating the water up here. I've got a long drop, as you can see. I have a reducer, um, which which increases the pressure. Um, don't forget, uh, for every foot you drop water, or 30 centimeters, you generate a half pressure, uh, a half psi of, uh, of pressure. So between the end of the pipe here and the water line up there, there's probably 50 to 60 centimeters. There's probably a full psi um, running past the end of that uh, pipe. Uh, the air inlet for the Venturi. Watch this thing again so you can see the, the, the bubble flow. Even now, with the minimal amount of, I mean, that's not a full, vent, a full siphon at the beginning, and it was still actually pulling air. You can also hear it running. And there you go. Lots of bubbles, lots of aeration, lots of churn. So, uh, yeah, uh, I had expected it was going to be more complicated than that. I hadn't really actually thought that, you know, um, a 10 mil hole and a 10 mil piece of clear plastic pipe it was going to be enough to do the job. Um, but there it is. As long as you've got water moving quickly past the opening, you will produce a Venturi effect. So uh, there you go, a little bit of Wednesday morning phys a little bit of Wednesday morning mad science and physics. So uh, yeah, instant venturi. Um, pull this thing out of here, and we'll just let it run without with the, out the piece, so you can see how I had the uh, that was originally in like this, which meant it was acting as a scoop. As soon as I turned it around like that, it works properly. So gonna leave it out for this run here, just so you can see the effect. And there's the the 10 mil hole in the piece of pipe.
So there's the flow starting. And the first thing you can see is there's water coming out the hole there. And um, as soon as the, uh, the venturi is removed and the muzzle of the pipe is covered up, you'll see there's no air injection. Lots of pressure up here, though, as the water level climbs up inside the pipe and the water's got to go somewhere else. So um, not as uh, forceful a run um, because, of course, there was air being back run into the piping system from up here. That's no good for the U-siphon. And then uh, not nearly as much uh, aeration of the water. Um, so, yeah. Noticeable difference. Uh, the startup, when you've got basically a bit of splash and the water is penetrating the uh, the uh, the incoming water is penetrating the uh, the surface layer. Um, yeah, you get some bubbles and some churn, but as soon as the uh, the mouth of the pipe is covered up and the injection is below water level, you lose all uh, all air injection. So there you go, folks. Uh, hope you have a great day. Uh, Michelle Valancourt in Morel signing off. Uh, I'll uh, put this up probably either t tonight or tomorrow and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like what you see I'm doing here, either between uh, my aquaponics and uh, rocket mass heater videos or my uh, gaming stuff, do me a favor and uh, throw me a like or hit the subscribe button. If you got any comments, questions, suggestions, ideas about things I could try or you're interested in knowing about, uh, do me a favor, drop me a line in the, uh, in the, uh, the comments section below the video and I'll be happy to try and help you out. Um, all the best. Bye-bye.